Um, one thing to mention here is how did we know that we were, so what was the right uh, answers that we used here? We started with A, and then we did E, right? This was A, and then we did E. But what about I? What about what? Um, I? Choice I. Choice Notice I. how choice I is very similar to choice E. It just has water. So let me explain to you when you would use that. Well, suppose, let's make a new problem. Suppose that what we were trying to make is this. How is this different? Well, this is what's called a terminal alkyne. Can you see why this is called terminal? Because it's at the end, so all that we have here is a hydrogen. Well, the approach we used here would not work for a terminal alkyne, and I'll show you why. Remember that we're using a very strong base here. We're using a very strong base, sodium amide. Um, now, this, can't, this still can't take any old hydrogen. For example, it can't take this hydrogen, because th that would not form a stabilized negative charge. But I don't know if you remember from the alkyne chapter that alkynes are slightly acidic. Alkynes are slightly acidic, terminal alkynes, because those are the only ones that have hydrogens. So if we had actually formed this, the amide would go ahead and take the hydrogen off of the alkyne. And then it would start acting like a nucleophile. Well, that by itself is enough to show us that we're in trouble. Yeah, that, you're right. This could now act like a nucleophile. But the point is, we don't want to, it to get deprotonated at the end. We just want this. So the point is, and, and uh, it turns out that uh, SP, SP carbons are more electronegative than SP3, so this is a more stabilized negative charge. So we're able to take this hydrogen where we normally can't take a hydrogen off of a carbon. And that's why they need the water. To put the hydrogen back on. So the lesson is, if you are trying to synthesize an internal alkyne, the way to make an internal alkyne is simply sodium amide attacking a, a dihalogen. But if you're trying to make a terminal alkyne, the way to do that is sodium amide in step one. And then, since that's going to end up deprotonated, you need to add somebody to protonate it in step two. And the conventional thing to use in this case is water. I suppose hydronium would work fine here as well. Uh, maybe not hydronium, because maybe that would start to um, attack the, actually, you wouldn't want to use hydronium, because then that would start to react with the triple bond. So the best thing to use here is just water um, to, to put the proton back on. So again, to make an internal alkyne, just use sodium amide on a, dihalo on a dihalogen to do two eliminations. But to make a terminal alkyne, you have to use the sodium amide, but you have to recognize that since it's terminal, the sodium amide will end up by deprotonating the alkyne. And if you don't want it deprotonated, you need a separate step where you use water to put the proton back on. So that's when you would use I if you were trying to make a terminal alkyne. Does that make any sense? Okay. All right, so these are just some specialized reactions that we can partly understand, but partially we just need to memorize the reagents that are used here.